Today we will be going over some of the key differences between the Shure 920 and other moisture testers you may be considering when purchasing a new moisture tester. Specifically, we will be comparing the 920 with the Dickie John Minigac and our lab certified Steinlight SL95 moisture tester. First, let's review the Shure 920, which is priced a little over $1,000. This tester weighs only 5 pounds and is made of thick aluminum. It can run on 6 AA batteries or a 9 volt AC adapter that is provided with purchase. The 920 comes with 34 pre installed commodities to test, but is capable of testing many more. The operating temperature of this unit ranges from 32 degrees to 120 degrees, meaning that the 920 can withstand colder or hotter climates and will give accurate results either way. The moisture range for the 920 is 6% to 40% and the sample temperature range is between 22 degrees and 160 degrees. This is important for those who want to test hot grain straight from the dryer. Many other moisture testers are not capable of testing hot grain over 120 degrees. Some of the benefits of this model are its durability, its ability to test hot or cold grain, the fact that it is AC adapter compatible, and its large display and backlight for when you're working in a dark environment. Some of the only drawbacks you may consider when buying a 920 moisture meter are that the 920 requires the sample to be weighed out, which can be done with a scale that comes with the 920 package. Also, the 920 does not store values like some other moisture testers do. Even considering these drawbacks, the advantages of the Shore 920 far outweigh the disadvantages. Next we have the Dickie John Minigac, priced at $500 depending on the distributor. This product weighs a little less than the Shore 920 and is made primarily of a hard plastic material. The Minigac runs on one 9V DC battery and has 16 installed commodities out of the box. This machine has a smaller operating temperature range of 40 degrees to around 113 degrees, and an average moisture range of 5% to 45%. Compared to the Shore 920, the Minigac has a much smaller sample temperature range of 32 degrees to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, almost 40 degrees less than the 920. This means that the Minigac is not capable of testing hot grain unless you want to ruin your $500 moisture tester. Some advantages of the Dickie John Minigac are its lightweight and ergonomic design and its ability to store up to three values to make an average reading. This product also has a built-in scale to weigh your sample, but tends to make a mess with your grain in the process. The disadvantages of the Minigac include its less than durable plastic casing, which can make this product easy to damage or at least knock out of calibration. Again, this product is not capable of testing hot grain out of the dryer and is not reliable in weather conditions below 40 degrees. Lastly, the Minigac has a smaller display than the Shore 920 and lacks a backlight to see your moisture readings in darker areas. Lastly, we have a Steinlight SL95. The SL95 varies in price, but usually sells for around $4,000. The unit shown has been recently certified for accurate results. This product weighs 30 pounds and is made of heavy metal sheeting, which obviously means that this guy isn't going in the combine. This tester tests all the grains that you would find in a grain elevator. The operating temperature for the SL95 is room temperature, since it's stationary, and has a moisture range a little lower than the Shore 920. The SL95 has a sample temperature range of 35 degrees to 110 degrees. Some pros of the SL95 are that it does not require a weigh down sample, and doesn't make a mess during testing. This product also provides test weight, which is something that the Shore 935 is capable of. Now since we know that this Steinlight is certified for accurate results, I'd like to compare the accuracy of both the Shore 920 and Dickie John Minigac. First, we'll get our measurements on the SL95. So 
So for the SL95, we did three uninterrupted runs that gave us 10.0, 10.2, and 10.2 again, giving us an average of 10.1% moisture. Next, we'll do three uninterrupted runs on the Minigac to see how it compares to a certified commercial unit. The three uninterrupted runs that we did on the mini GAC gave us 11.0, 11.0, and 10.9 for an average of 11.0, which is almost a whole point higher than what we got on the SL95. Lastly, we'll see how the Shore 920 compares to the SL95. For the three uninterrupted runs on the 920, we got 10.1, 10.2, and 9.9, .9, which comes out to an average of about 10.1, which is, unsurprisingly, exactly what we got for the SL95. Now keep in mind that the SL95 is a certified lab unit, which means that the 920 lines up perfectly with the same type of unit that would be used in a grain elevator. Today we went over some of the key differences between the Shore 920, the Dickey John Minigac, and the Steinlight SL95. We also did a demonstration showing the differences between the Shore 920 and Dickey John Minigac when compared to a lab certified Steinlight SL95. We hope that you've learned something from this video and that you're better equipped now to choose your moisture tester. Thanks for watching and have a great day.